Independence First presents Working, 10 Years and Counting. One out of five people has a disability. Since 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act has required that persons with disabilities be provided with accommodations on the job. It has allowed many people to return to work for the first time in years, and for others, it's a well-deserved victory after years of not working or working with inadequate support systems. This project hopes to capture within oral histories and photographs the spirit and determination of Americans with disabilities who remain critical members of the workplace community. Many thanks to all the people who are featured in this exhibit. Their good hearts and kindness are reflective of the thousands of people with disabilities working in our communities today. Independence First is proud to be a collaborative partner in this significant exhibition. Independence First is a nonprofit organization with services that promote independence in our community for people with disabilities. May this exhibit benefit many people and bring greater awareness about people with disabilities. Diana Sullivan, Project Coordinator for Independence First. Here at my job, I have reasonable accommodations. DVR purchased my computer for me, which was a wonderful thing. I don't believe that would have happened 20 years ago. Being able to take the bus and or using paratransit, that's a plus, and the building is accessible. These few things weren't considered just 10 years ago. I use, to push buttons and to write, a mouth stick and a mouth stick pen, and I use a cordless phone, which I have on my head. This is connected to my computer. I do have voice activation on my computer, but I don't use it as much as I could. I use my mouth stick most often. I need to be more patient and take the time to train myself, again, on the voice activation software. Figuring out a reasonable plan so people can work and still keep their benefits. We just need to keep fighting, keep talking. Martha Chambers, UCP of Southeastern Wisconsin, Inc., Information Referral Specialist. I met a man by the name of Master J.K. Lee. Before I had met Master Lee, a lot of schools rejected me because of my disability, because I was blind. They had a fear of me not being able to compete or not to learn like a sighted person. They used that stigma to put a limitation on me. Master Lee gave me a chance to show him what I could do, and I have been here with it ever since. I am currently a first-degree black belt. I do a lot of volunteer work so I can be close to kids. I enjoy working with kids. To me, kids are my number one priority. With the problems kids face today, I feel that they need someone to show them that leadership or give them that strong leadership that they need to guide them in some kind of way. Because kids face so much with the violence and the drugs and the gangs that's out here today, they need somebody, a role model, to show them that you don't have to go that way to succeed. Carvel Campbell, Beulah Brenton Center, Taekwondo instructor, first degree black belt. Lots of people tell me, you do more than able-bodied people here. I'm at school at 6.30 in the morning. They're just getting out of bed. I'm already there. Not that I want to be. I'd rather be in bed, too. But depending on the van service, what if the van is late? What if you're 10 minutes late? You have to make sure you have that cushion of time and that things are set up for you. Because I always said that my disability is not going to be a reason why I'm not doing my job. I have to figure out ways to make it work. Whether it's coming an hour before school starts and staying an hour or so after school, that is what I have to do to do it. Because it's going to take me longer than it's going to take you. It takes me longer to photocopy than it takes you to photocopy. So those kinds of things. And the kids, the first time they ever saw me, they just looked at me. Their mouths, that was probably the only time they were quiet, the first day of school. Oh my God, she can't be a teacher. But I think it just scared them. I mean, I never saw a teacher in a wheelchair. I think I'm an excellent role model for people in chairs at school because you never see them. I've never seen a teacher here in a wheelchair. I mean, now a little bit more from TV and stuff like that. But when I was going to school, I never, unless somebody broke their leg, Becky Trashinsky, Marshall High School, art teacher, department head. Mostly I clean the stalls. In the spring and summer, I water the indoor arena and all that. About a week, I didn't go to work because I had a cold and a sore throat, so I cleaned some extra stalls and made some extra money. If I clean extra stalls, I make more money. To get to work, I take the 67 bus to the 63 to the number 9. I work part-time. I work Monday through Thursday. I'm off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I like it. First, I was cleaning the whole barn. 
Now I only clean half the barn. Now I get done for things like basketball for the Olympics and all that. Jeff Strilo, Norberg Farms, ground person. When we walked into Burlington, there was a sign that said, Greeter Wanted, and I said, Hey, I can do that. Hey, I can get paid to be you know. Nice. So I went in there, and the security guard said, Can I help you? And I said, Yeah. Can I have an application? I'd like to apply for the greeter position. She said, Oh, okay. And I was like, Oh, great. Here we go again. Then she gave me the application to fill out. My attendant stuck the pen in my mouth. That's how I write. She said, Here. And I was filling it out and everything. And the security person was in shock and just looking at me. Oh, my God. So she said, you're really amazing, but I don't think you can do the greeter position. The greeter has to also be the security person, which means you have to run after people who shoplift. You know what? Our computer person just quit two days ago, and we're looking for somebody. So it was my lucky day. It was pure luck. Ann Reinfleisch, Burlington Coat Factory, computer room operator. While recovering from cancer in a major MS flare-up in 1989, I learned I could become a travel agent and work what's called outside sales in my home. So if I could have a home office, this would be perfect. If I have a day where my fatigue is out of control, I can just not work that day. It seemed like a great idea. The bad news is you don't get paid a lot to do this. So I do work as a travel agent. I am still on Social Security Disability. It does support my income. More important than anything, my job gives me constant reassurance that I can do something and do it fairly well. And I see and hear from people all the time, which makes my life full. My goals are actually bigger and brighter than ever. And they're brighter because there are so many of us with disabilities who are outside of the box now. We are not being held down. I've lived with MS for 24 years, and I continue to work as a travel counselor and volunteer in Wisconsin. Roxanne Perez, Travel Counselor, Independence First Incorporated Board President. A lot of the people I work with are very talented people. We just all feel we're stuck in the same boat together. This is it. Deep down inside, I keep telling myself, no, this isn't it. There's something better. I just have to find it. I've been through enough schooling. I'm not hard to train, and I learn very fast. Just give me a chance. You can tell them until you are blue in the face. I'm qualified for this job. I can type 95 words a minute, or, or I can answer 11 phones at one time. You can be totally qualified for the job. But the thing is, they don't want to take the time out to train you. And the way I look at it is, everyone has to be trained to do their job, but they tend to look at it as being more of a burden. And I get angry because I know what I can do, and I don't like people holding me back. Kathleen Newstead. Wiscraft. I've learned so many other skills to compensate for the ones that I was lacking, and that has enhanced my life in ways that will always keep me discovering. One of the things that I think has been instrumental is that I've learned to adapt to new environments, the way in which I communicate. I'm more in tune to body language and to energy, and I use a lot of other kinds of cues to help supplement my hearing. I think it's what helped shape me as a person, and I like myself as a person. So I figure something must be going right with that. My hearing aids, I don't leave home without them. Batteries, communication tools. And for example, if I'm in class, I have an auditory listening device called an FM system. So I make sure that I have that. Primarily, my sculptures are made from stone, wood, and steel. And I'm at a point now that I'm proposing a sculpture with all three elements. Denise Schantz, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, graduate student, student worker. You clean the training center? I got that. What else? Grind busters. What do you do there? I wash windows. You clean where? The state office building. Then where else do you work? YMCA. And then what do you do at the YMCA? No, what do they pay you to do? Oh, I think to clean the pool with the vacuum. So what else do you do at the YMCA? In the afternoons, some students come from the high school. What do you do with them? I help them with weightlifting. The one instructor from the local high schools has found out that in bringing some of her students over, that Patrick can be pretty perceptive of people with special needs. So he'll gravitate to them to see if they need assistance. All the time. They partner up really well together. He's very disciplined about that. Yeah, you better keep going. 
Patrick McBride, and adult sponsor Carol Ann Kay, YMCA, Grime Busters, and the State Office Building, several positions. The ADA has really helped to change things. People are working all over the place now. I was in the hardware store the other day. I was looking for a hinge for the kitchen, and there was this gentleman working in the hardware store who was using a power chair for mobility. He was one of the clerks. That was the first time I'd ever seen anyone in a power chair as a clerk. It was cool. He was hard to keep up with. I had to really work to keep up. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say that the ADA is there because I go from my home and I get into a taxi and the drivers understand now that I have a right to ride in that cab with my dog. And the same thing with the bus, public transportation. It's no longer an issue to get on the bus. I think the ADA had something to do with that. And people don't get surprised when I talk to them and I say, I'm going to work. It still happens when people say, you work? With a question mark on the end. But it's less and less. And I do believe that has something to do with the ADA because people in their everyday lives are encountering people with disabilities in their grocery stores, at their schools, their children are friends with kids who use wheelchairs, and this is some of what the ADA has helped to accomplish. Matt Zacker, United Cerebral Palsy of Southeastern Wisconsin, Information Resource Specialist. I had some difficult times in school, but those difficult challenges made me a stronger person. So, in a way, my deafness has affected me, but in a positive way, and in a way, it hasn't affected me. My success in school carried on into the working environment. I was not embarrassed about my deafness and did not hesitate to ask people to look at me since I lip read. Knowing that the Americans with Disabilities Act was in place, I feel more confident asking M&I for needed services. I'm able to communicate very well because M&I provided me with special phone equipment and a pager. That's all I need, and I'm all set. Susan York J.D., Marshall and Isley Corporation, Corporate Marketing. When I went for the interview, they treated me with, well, what happened was they didn't realize that I was in a wheelchair. When I fill out the application, you just don't put, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. You don't put that. You just put what they need to know. And when they call and interview me, I want them to focus on the inner me, not the outer me, because it's just the point that eventually I'm going to get the job of my dreams if I focus on it. So I get a raise just like everybody else, and they yell at me like everybody else. I'm late like everybody else, and some days I call in sick because I don't feel like it. It's just your everyday job. What I don't like are the jobs that make people with disability feel as if it's just a made-up job, like they made it up just for that person with disability, which is dumb. I don't want to just lay around and look at my disability and look at what I can't do. I want to look at what I can do and the positive things that I can share with other people. Lavonia Nelson, General Cinema Theater, Cashier. Photography by Al Belinsky. Oral histories by Kristen Kurzawa. Production artist, James Smalls. Sponsors of working, 10 years and counting, are Independence First, Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, Wisconsin Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, Wisconsin Humanities Council with funds from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Special thanks to the contributors of this project. They include Lee Schultz, Professor Michael Gordon, G.W. Mayer Custom Framing, Becky Williams, Carol Voss, the Volunteer Oral History Readers, and the employers whose workplaces are featured in the photographs.